All right. We seems to be live. How about that? How about that? Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Hello, Sarimon. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, uh, today is what? I don't even know what today is. Today is Monday. Oh, my God. So, the beginning of the week. The actual beginning of the week. Mm. How's your week is going so far? Mm. Okay. So we need to come up with a name for this thing. Mm. So it's a to-do app. It's a to-do app, but in the Rust. Doesn't really sound that good. Uh, so that should be a little bit better name to do rs right because it's like rust community is almost like a javascript community they are very creative creative with their names they just add the name and put js there but the same thing goes for rs uh hello uh lemonade hello hello <laughs> shut up hello Borini, by the way mm. uh so <clears throat> It's a pretty strong tea with a copium, um, because I will definitely need that. So crates.io mm. is there something like to do? Uh, minuscule to do macro, and all of these things are uh, libraries. But we're going to be making an application. Actually, we're going to be making an application. So maybe it's going to be to do rs. Right, so, and nobody took to do RS. My God, we're going to be the first ones. Okay. Uh, so, I'm going to do to do RS, and there we go. It's going to be cargo init, I suppose. Is it going to ask questions? Please don't ask me questions. Thank you so much. Uh, so, did I start Emacs from within my development environment? Probably I did not. I did not. Uh, all right, so, eh? I didn't see shit in this mist. Oh, yeah, it actually complained. Invalid character dot in the package name. We off to a great start. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so, I guess we'll have to replace the dot with something else, because, I mean... Rust is so safe, it doesn't even allow you to put a, a dot in there. Okay. Uh, so this entire folder is empty, right? So uh, I'm going to be just renaming to do rs to, to do dash rs. Right, so something like that. Are you going to be happy now? Cargo init. Mm, all right, so it created something. That's already uh, an, uh, an achievement, I would even say. Uh, so are there any color schemes? I think this color scheme is a little bit more, like a little bit aggressive. Uh, Elf Lord. Eh? Uh, so let me actually put the Elf Lord uh, somewhere here. Uh, Elf Lord. Okay. So it's going to be so C main dot rs. It looks a little bit better to be fair. What do you guys think? I think it looks a little bit better. Uh, so, and if I try to do cargo uh, run, is it gonna do the thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, it actually printed hello world. Would you look at that? I think that's pretty cool. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. Uh, so, and I think we need to, like, the way I want to develop this to-do application, I want it to be a console application, first of all, but I want it to have a TUI UI, right? Textual UI. I want it to, to have TUI, uh, right? So, and uh, because of that, we need some sort of, like, incursus or Termio. Uh, the last time I tried Termio, I actually had a pretty unpleasant experience with it. Uh, so, um... Termios. Okay, I can try to do it again, but it's just like it was kind of strange. Uh, maybe because I don't really, um, I'm not really familiar with it that much. Uh, so I'm really a little bit more comfortable with curses. So I'm gonna try. Well, this is not doesn't look like 
the right thing. Um, mm, is that the right one? I'm not sure, actually. Hmm. I think it's a Termion or something. Yeah, I think it's a Termion. Uh, what the hell is this song? I specifically asked without the human noises. I configured Pretzel to suggest me music without human noises, and I hear human noises. <sighs> Computers. Uh, anyone? Anyway, uh, Termion is a, is a pure. Yeah, I think that's the that's, that's the thing. Uh, so it's located on GitLab. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bindless library for controlling terminals. Okay. Uh, maybe that's what we want. I remember, like, there was another one. Term. Mm hmm. I remember it was actually hosted on GitHub. Did they move recently, or maybe I'm uh, missing something? Okay. Uh, Rust and Curses alternative. I remember there was something. Uh, it's like, yeah, Termion. Uh, yeah, what what are the alternatives? Termion. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I think that's it. I think that's the, that's the thing. Okay, so let's give it a try, I suppose. Um... Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Mm, Termion. Why website is so fucking slow? It's a simple website. Cargo run. Okay, so we'll have to wait like an hour to build shit ton of dependencies just for the uh, for the console library or something like that. Mm, I wonder how many hours we'll have to wait. We're about to find out. We're about to find out. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this library, I'm gonna just give it yet another try. Just simply yet another try, if I en encounter any problem, back to Incursus, like instantly. Instantly to Incursus, because like every time I try one of these libraries, they're just like really weird, they build for an hour, so they do some weird shit, it's just like, eh, Incursus just works. You know what I mean? It just fucking works. So, like, like seriously. Um, Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. So it seems to be working. There's not that many dependencies, which is nice. Uh, and let's take a look at uh, some of the examples. Uh, all right. So I think I want to actually maybe put this thing somewhere like this uh, and open this entire stuff like that. Uh -huh. Oh my god. Use ter to termion termion color style. There we go. So we also use uh, STDIO. There we go. Mm -hmm. eh. uh, just a second. Just a second. Mm, print a lem. Uh, red. Right, so I just want to see how you create colors. So this is a foreground and this is just going to be red, right? So, and I suppose I can qu quite uh, quickly rename this to blue, right? Like this. And uh, blue and bold. It's like bold and bond craft, right? So uh, bold and bond craft. Uh, so blue and uh, bold. Of, of what's interesting is that after this one, it actually gets reset. Mm, I don't stream on YouTube, by the way. I do not stream on YouTube because I'm not allowed to. Uh, 
Uh, all right. Style bold. Mm. <clears throat> so, and this one is just basically a reset. All right. Uh -huh. And style reset. Bold and Bondcraft, yes. Do you guys watch him? By the way, it's actually a pretty cool YouTube channel. I really like it. Well, I mean, I'm a little bit biased, okay? So there's obvious reason why I like Bold and Bondcraft uh, content, but I've seen actually people outside of Russia also liking it, uh, his content. So, yeah. I wish he would visit uh, Novosibirsk, specifically Akadem Gordok, the place where I live, because this is like the most Soviet like place <laughs> in the entire Novosibirsk. I don't know, I, as far as I know, he's like personally been in Novosibirsk, but I don't think he actually made any videos on Novosibirsk. Uh, so that would be actually kind of cool. Um, mm, well, I mean, he, he likes everything Soviet. Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, I do understand them because the Soviet aesthetics is actually quite unique. So, um, by the way, like Half-Life 2, the unique aesthetics of Half-Life 2 is actually a mix of European and Soviet aesthetics. Seriously. So, so the thing that gives Half-Life 2 the like uniqueness is like a little bit of a mix of Soviet stuff. Right. So it is quite interesting, actually. Um, Mm. Um, inspired Bulgaria, and Bulgaria is an ex-Soviet uh, Republic as far as I know, right? So... Is it not? Was it not? Or am I being ignorant? I don't remember. Eastern Bloc. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. Okay, so that means I'm being uneducated. Thank you, thank you for telling me. Yeah, alright, alright, that's cool. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we have uh, red, blue, blue and bold, and just plain italic. This doesn't look like italic, and but I'm pretty sure this is because we're inside of Team Ux, so I think I can try to exit Team Ux. Uh, all right, cargo run, all right. And okay, so I think this is because of the Team Ux. Um, all right, that's actually pretty cool. Um, so we can use this kind of shit. Uh, can we position the the mouse cursor? So this is something that I want to be able to do. I want to be able to actually uh, take control over the whole screen, right, and draw in a, like arbitrary places and stuff like that. Uh, so read password. So moving cursor. Okay, so I think this is what I need to do here. So you can do you can clear all then you can move the cursor in a particular place. Okay, that's actually quite good. Uh, this is actually quite good and that's precisely what I need in here. Um, all right, so might as well do something like this. Eh, Emacs. What are you doing, Emacs? Wait a second, this is not Emacs. So that's why it feels so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm writing code and thinking, this Emacs is really weird today, like, what the fuck? Okay, uh, so... <laughs> uh, alright, so this is what we're doing. <laughs> but Emacs is really weird today, I'm not gonna lie. It's just like, eh, I don't know. Um, uh, Termin, uh, Cursor, and I think you have to do Go To. Wait a second, you have Go To in Rust? You have go to disgusting. By the way, is there a go to in Rust like for real? Uh, Rust go to. I think there's only like continue and shit like that. Okay, there is um, there is something. Uh, save but not complete implementation of the go to operator. Uh, okay. Hmm. All right. It's a separate crate. It's a separate crate. Very well then. Uh, hello, Manasoma. Hello, hello. How are you? Uh, so let me let me go back to, to this thing and we're going to... This is a very alien PLS music. Seriously. Just listen to it. This is an alien PLS. Mm -hmm. And it worked. 
It actually put stuff. Hmm. Okay. Very well then. Hmm. Alright, so I can move the cursor and can I put some stuff in there? Um, I don't know. Can I get the size of the terminal? So there's a mouse terminal, uh, a read password and so on and so forth. Maybe there is some documentation. Um, oh, I remember that there was like a cargo docs uh, for, for CD. Uh, cargo docs for CD. Um, and um, mm, 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 mm. so we can do something like open. I remember there was a flag for that. And there we go. So maybe we can take a look at the terminal. Uh, and uh, okay, so clearing the screen. So after cursor, all before cursor, until okay, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, so there's a cursor. So there's a screen. I think I need a screen. Uh, managing switching between main and alternative screens. Uh, okay, so from STD out, screen flash, and so on and so forth. I want to able to. I want to be able to know the size of the screen. Unfortunately, so there are different styles. Okay, so that makes sense, I suppose. Mm, row. Gotcha, hyper. Mm. So, managing row mode. Row mode is a, a particular state of TTY. It can have, it signifies that no line buffering. I think this is one of the things you want to do actually when you start using this entire thing, right? So, you want to go into the row mode. Um, terminal, terminal size. Uh, terminal size. Oh, shit. Thank you so much. Okay. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, so, all right. So, let's give it a try. What the fuck is this editor? Uh, SOC. Um, mm, 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 mm. Terminal size. Right, and one of the things we we'll probably want to print in here, so let's actually remove this entire stuff. It's going to be something like that, and then uh, print a len. Alright, it's going to be a debug shite. A debug shite. Uh, terminal size. Uh, cargo run. There we go. Playtime, uh, it's 65 by, 20, by 25. Is that true? If I actually make it a little bit bigger, will it be different? Yeah, it is different. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. And why can it fail? So it is a result. Uh, so it may fail for... I guess it may fail for like reasons of exceptions or something like that, if you know what I'm talking about. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, we need to go into the role mode, right? So, uh, let's actually go in here. Uh, terminal role into role mode. Right, terminal uh, role into role mode. There we go. Uh, so, terminal role into role mode. Uh, and in here, we'll have to import STDIO. Right, and then just uh, write uh, STDIO. STD, not STDIO, but STD out. Right. Um, STD out into row mode. Uh, unwrap. Right, and this one is going to be just simply. Uh, right. Mm -mm -mm. So, I don't know, do you have to actually switch back from the role mode afterwards? I think you should be able to, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much. So, the first thing I want to do, uh, essentially, I want to clean the entire screen. Uh, right, so we're going to clean the entire screen and we're going to go to 1-1. One, one. I guess that's fine. Eh, eh, this is not the one. I want to actually do something like this. Uh, so, I have no idea why you have VIP. Uh, all right, uh, and let's continue. So here's that, and here is also that. Uh, let me let me see. So we cleaned everything, right? We cleaned everything, and now uh, let me see what we got. 
Mm, okay, so it looks good. Uh, so what if I actually uh, do something like this? So it's going to be a uh, loop, right? It's going to be infinite loop, right? Uh, let me see. Mm. Okay, so it doesn't even... Oh, okay, so that's actually really strange. Uh... Mm -mm. So it's going to be a grab. Uh, to do RS, right? So it's going to be Q2, 6, 1, 75, right? Okay, so this is because it never actually read anything. Um, yeah, okay. Mm, so let's take a look at the input. Uh, user input. I need more examples. I need more examples. Uh, so let's take a look to... Uh, to um, mm hmm Hmm... Mm -hmm. The worst thing when making incursors up, ending up with corrupted terminal. Uh, have you heard about this command, by the way? Have you heard about it? It's actually a pretty cool command. Uh, I wonder if it's a bash command or it, it's a, it's actually a, a program. It's actually the, the program. It resets the, the state of the terminal. Um, quite often, if you end up with a corrupted terminal, you can just reset it. And sometimes, even if you can't see what you're typing, you just you can just blindly type reset, and it will quite often work. So it's it's not really a problem. Like you just type reset, and it's not corrupted anymore because it, the state gets reset. You know what I'm talking about? So uh, I really recommend you, by the way. Um, yeah. So even if you cannot see. Just type blindly and press enter. It will quite likely work. I never actually encountered a situation that the terminal is corrupted so much that it's impossible to type reset. It's quite often possible to do that. So, yeah. Uh, hello, Agudu. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Uh, welcome, welcome to the stream. Mm -hmm. It is quite possible to do that. Uh, alrighty, so... Uh, so, uh, where are the examples? So we have click, keys, okay, let's take a look at the keys. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the first we think we, we do, we go into the row mode. Okay, perfect, I think I found the perfect example that will uh, help us to actually move uh, in the future. All right, so this one is going to be std in, std in, there we go. Uh, and in here we do this kind of thing. And then we're iterating through just keys of std in. Okay, that's actually perfect. For key in std in, uh, eh, eh, std in keys. All right, so it's going to be something like that. Uh, and what we're doing here, we go to one and the clear current line. Um, and depending on what we actually pressed, we're doing like different things and whatnot. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, it's kind of strange, why do you flush? the output when it's in row mode. I thought, well, since it's in row mode, it doesn't mean that you don't need to flush it because it could be still buffered by the rust. Right, so, yeah. Mm, all right. So let's do match C, uh, C and wrap. All right, so it's gonna be key char, and the character that I care about is gonna be Q, and I wanted to actually quit. Right, there we go. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Do we need to do anything else? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. And, okay, some errors, uh, aborting previous uh, warnings. Okay, so maybe we can do something like this, let me see. So, using comma... Oh yeah, this is because of the comma. All right. Uh, it's actually quite dangerous to just run it from CM. So let's do it like that. Uh -huh. STD in, in not found. Okay. So let's quickly do that. So... Uh, STD in. Mm, why do we need to unwrap the keys? Because they probably actually return the result. Right, so I think keys is uh, an iterator uh, of results. So Rust docs. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So uh, std in. All right, if you take a look at std in. So this is the iterator of std in. And does it have a keys? Wait, 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 no, no, no. But yeah, so it's actually fine, keys. Um, std in, 
Is, is that the big one? I don't know, to be fair. Somewhere located. But it uh, basically, reading a single key may fail. Right, reading a single key may fail. Uh, all right, so what, what else do I need in here? Mm -hmm. Method not found. Well, definitely it does not exist. So uh, I also probably. Oh, it's located in Termion. Okay, okay. It's probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Um... God damn it. This is what I don't like about this, like, traits and. Uh, type classes like in Haskell and Rust is that the actual implementations of things that they're like not obvious <laughs> they're really not obvious but again if you're using an IDE maybe it's not a problem but the question is why do you have to create yourself a problem that then you have to solve with IDE so uh, yeah I just don't understand that mm. you have trait name that you should import in the compiler error thank you Thank you so much. I didn't know that I need to import the trait name. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. You're really helping me. I really appreciate that. Okay, so Termion input keys. Uh, use Termion input uh, keys. All right. So maybe I actually should use Emacs. I don't know why I keep using Vim, to be fair. Because in, in Emacs, it's a little bit easier to navigate. Uh, right. Right, so um, uh, why are you jumping in here? I don't understand. Okay. <sighs> it's event key. Okay. Right. So let's do card uh, build one more time. Uh, help similar its key. Okay. Uh, anything else? Color unused. Uh, what about warnings in here? Uh, method not found keys in std in. So do I have to import anything else? Uh, maybe terminal read as well. Uh, right. So. Uh huh. All right. Seems to be working now. Okay. <sighs> All right. And nothing happened. Literally nothing happened. So, okay, going back to incurses then. Uh, grab uh, to do. Right. Wait, what? Um, yeah, I want it. Kill to 69.49. Well, uh, going back to incurses because I just couldn't be bothered to, you know, deal with this stuff. Like, I just, I'm sorry. I, I just don't want to do that. Uh, like, every time I try it, it's just like, eh, eh. Why is it so complicated? Just give me in curses. And curses is simple. Initialize and move cursor around, just put a string in there, and that's it. Like, I just don't understand why I have to deal with this shit. Uh, all right. Mm, all right. In curses. Using in curses instead. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and speaking of incurses, here is the hello world. I might actually steal uh, some examples. Okay, so we, we have something in here, which is which is nice. Uh, all right, so um, use incurses like this. There we go, and we initialize the screen. We need a screen. Uh, and at the end, we have to do and. and done. There we go. Mm. So refresh. Uh huh. Hello world. Mm -hmm. mm, Get CH. You see, fucking four lines. Holy shit. It's fucking four. Like, okay, five lines. It's that fucking simple. Come on, 
Why there's no like in Rust API that is as fucking simple as that? Just, it doesn't even, it's not a question of safety or not safety. Just don't overcomplicate the API. Just give me a bunch of functions that do the thing that needs to be done. Holy shit. No need to overcomplicate. Uh... Okay. Uh, hello, Valik Zero. Welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. Uh, so, uh, we have this thing. Uh, we have this thing. And um, so, what I want to do actually, I want to organize the loop. Uh, I have this loop. Mm, so, it's going to be git, git ch. Right. Uh, quit false uh, while not quit. Uh -huh. So it's gonna be a let key. And as far as I know, get ch uh, returns. Hmm. <clears throat> get ch returns integer if I remember correctly, right? So. Mm. So, um, I think I need to do something like that, right? Uh, as u8, as char, right? Uh, and it's gonna be something like quit. Um, quit true. Mm. Uh, ensure that also the match character is of type character. So if I uh, try to do S char, invalid cast, uh, only U8, okay, so, uh, not I6, okay, so that that is correct, so that means if I try to cast it here, uh, ensure that all possible non-exhaustive, oh, it's a, it's a non-exhaustive pattern match, okay, okay, so I was just wondering, like, what the hell is going on, so it's just non-exhaustive pattern match. Uh, all right, so and now you can exit, okay, so everything is super simple, cool, cool. Um, now, um, what I want to do actually, I want to pr uh, print a bunch of things, uh, right, if we're going to have a to-do app, right, if we're going to have a to-do app, we better keep to-dos uh, in some sort of a, like um, vector, right, so it's going to be vector of strings, um, it's going to be something like this. And what we want to push in here, so I, I think I can do something like this, right, so uh, vec, um, um, so what kind of to-dos do we need to put in here? Um, what kind of to-dos? Chat, suggest me to-dos. Uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, learn Rust. But I already know Rust. Even better than you, by the way. Learn Termion. Termion is shit. Um, uh, think of proper buy bread. Okay, so actually that sounds good. Uh, buy a bread, a single one, right? So not multiple ones. Uh, buy a bread. All right. So eat, sleep, pet, dog. Uh, write the to-do app. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. <laughs> uh, write the to-do app. Uh, right. Write the to-do app. Make a cup of tea. Okay, make a cup of tea actually sounds good. Make a cup of tea. Uh, all right. Mm, do we need anything else? Mm, 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 mm. Mm. All right, so I think that's fine. So we're going to have three of them. Uh, we're going to have three of them. And while we're rendering all of that, I suppose uh, this is how we're going to do that. To do in to do's, uh, iterate, right. So, and it's going to be add str. Right, add str and it's going to be to do. Uh, all right. So, and I think I actually need to like move the terminal, right. Mm, cargo docs open. 
Uh, it's a dog open. I think it was in beam. Mm -hmm. So, and I think I need to enumerate, enumerate, uh, and so it's going to be something like this move Y, and this is going to be like that. Okay, so essentially, maybe I'm going to even call it like Y, right? Or maybe even the row, right? So, this is, has to be a row. Uh, all right, so, and if I try to run this entire thing, um, okay, so I think it has to be done like this, right? So it's pattern matching ins inside of this thing. So it's an i32, uh, it expects i32, so that means I need to actually convert it to i32. Uh, all right, and it didn't even do anything, which is kind of kind of strange, and I think I know why. Right, because we need to refresh it after we render this entire thing. Right, so let's actually quickly refresh it. So here we initialize in curses, then we initialize the state of the application. This is the state of the application. This is the event loop, and we're rendering everything, and then we handle the input from the user. Very straightforward, very simple. No overcomplications, but it still doesn't really render anything. I wonder why. Um, so if I put it, put it like that, right, if I put it like that, Mm, it's kind of strange. Remove the smith. Well, I mean, it's not really affecting anything, but it needs to be mutable in the future. You know what I'm talking about? It needs to be mutable in the future. Hmm. Strange. Uh, so what if I just try to do move zero zero right, and then add str uh, test uh, and let's give it a try. Uh, all right. So maybe, uh, huh. oh, I see, I see what's going on, okay, I see, I see, all right, uh -huh. okay, so that, that uh, means this entire thing is working, uh, and then I'm going to do this entire step, okay, so now we have all of this uh, to do, uh, to do here, right, so pretty cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So um, now I want to be able to actually maybe select the current to do right um, somehow. I want to be able to actually go through them if you know what I mean, right? So uh, I need some sort of like a, a cursor that points at the current to do, and then if I press up and down, it actually um, it actually moves around, right? So we can have something like. Um, to do current right and initially it's going to be like zero or something uh, maybe it would make sense to actually put it into your size right <sighs> into your size and uh, um, essentially it should be pretty straightforward um, so this is going to be index If uh, to do current is the same as the index, right, we basically render it in a different style. Render in a different uh, style, right? It's as simple as that. So indicating the cursor is as simple as rendering in a different style. Uh, but how can you render in a different style? And so as, as far as I know, in Incursus, you have to have this like color pairs and whatnot. Uh, so let me, let me go back. Mm. Uh, Cola pair, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I forgot how to do. I think it's init colors first of all, uh, if I remember correctly, right? Mm. Initialize color. Mm. I think I'm gonna actually go to my uh, previous uh, Encursus application and just steal, steal some code from there. I'm gonna just steal some code from there. Mm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> 
So we have a neat style. So I remember that style was actually defined somewhere here. Why all of the music here sucks so much? I don't understand. Uh, okay, so we have to do start caller. Right, so that's the first thing we need to do here. Uh, start caller, and then we're initializing pairs. But as we're initializing pairs, right, uh, we need to give them the names. So it has to be i32, uh, regular pair, in i16, it's gonna be zero, and then we just provide that. So this is a regular pair, um, and this is gonna be uh, in highlighted, highlighted, uh, highlight pair. So this is gonna be one. Uh, Highlight pair. This one is going to be black. This is going to be white. Uh, there we go. Uh, and if I remember correctly, so to work with different um, colors, HTTR uh, on. Yeah, yeah, so this is what we have to use. I barely remember. Uh, okay. Mm hmm. So this is going to be uh, the pair. So we're going to, uh, um, by default, use regular pair. This one could be... Actually, you don't really have to make it mutable because you have these kind of sort of blocks, right? And if this is the current, we're using the um, the highlight pair, right? This is the highlight pair. Otherwise, we're using regular pair, right? So, and there's no need to make it um, sort of immutable. So then, editor on, uh, call a pair. Uh, pair like this, but parry pair. So this is called pair, and then we disable this entire thing in here. All right, so looks good to me, looks good to me. So is it gonna compile? It compiles, nice. Uh, all right, so if I try to run it, and as you can see, the first one is selected, right? The first one is selected. And uh, if I change the current thing, uh, if I change the current thing, the second is selected. So our goal right now is to actually control the selector with the keys, right? So uh, let's give it a try. Uh, we're gonna use W for up. So to do current is going to be essentially uh, minus one, right? But only if to do current is uh, greater than zero, right? So if it's greater than zero, only then we're trying to do it like that. Uh, so the next one is going to be S, like this. The next one is going to be S. Um, we can actually allow to go over, at least for now, so it doesn't really matter, right? Because it's... Uh, it's not like it's gonna overflow. We're not using the to-do current to access the uh, the each individual thing in here. We just use it as an index to see what's going on. And if I try to run this entire thing, well, I mean, okay, so let's, let me try to run it in inside this thing. To-do current is not mutable, and let's make it mutable. Mm. Okay, so, and if I run it, so, yeah, works pretty great. So now I can actually select. So there's something weird in here, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, oh yeah, we need to actually disable echo, right? So because it echoes the characters in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you see what's going on? It echoes the characters. So uh, the thing we want to do in here is just like uh, disable the echo. Um, another thing is maybe if to do current uh, specifically with to do, I think uh, it should be something like this, and we need to actually find the minimum between the to do's length and this entire stuff, right? So to do length and this entire stuff. Uh, all right, looks good. Mm, looks good. Looks good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. So yet again, uh, let me fix this entire stuff. Min. Uh, I think min is located is somewhere like in uh, ORD or something like that. Uh, so Rust docs. <laughs> Where is min? Mm, it's it's in CMP. Okay, sure. Uh, STD CMP. All right. That's a really strange song somebody is unzipping something mm -hmm. uh, all right 
<laughs> Gachi Hyper, exactly. Uh, okay. Uh, so, and... Well, for some reason... Wait. I think it has to be minus one. Uh, the music is really quiet, by the way. Is it better now? Hopefully it's better. Page like the stream, yeah, exactly. Uh, mm, so I'm just trying to adjust the volumes of the music. Uh, so it has to be minus one. Um, okay, so as you can see, we're, we're doing that. Mm -hmm. What I want to do, I want you to disable echo, right? So I want you to disable echo. Um, so let me see. Mm -hmm. No echo. All right. mm, no echo. So, and if I try to run this thing now, uh, there is no echoing of these characters in here. I would also like to disable the cursor. I find the cursor quite annoying. Uh, it doesn't usually help. Uh, whatsoever uh, and curse why is it so slow and curses disable uh, cursor and curses disable cursor how do I add cursor in and curses uh, set cursor zero maybe zero maybe not I don't know oh okay set cursor to zero uh -huh. curse set uh -huh. visibility something like that um, so cursor visibility, expected enumeration cursor visibility, okay, uh, so uh, cursor visibility, oh, okay, so of course it has to be huge like that, uh, cursor visibility, uh, and within the cursor visibility you have cursor vis, well, I mean, <laughs> Why do you need to prefix it with cursor then if you already... Okay, whatever. Cursor visible. All right. Uh, okay, the cursor is still uh, invisible, so it has, it has to be invisible. Uh, all right. Uh -huh. um, hmm. So, uh, yeah, now we have the thing uh, through which we can actually scroll and stuff, uh, so which is pretty convenient, I think. Mm. So interestingly enough... Mm, <clears throat> Uh, interesting enough, um, we need to also have like a second list of things, uh, the things that are already done, right? So uh, we're gonna have some something like done, uh, right? So it's gonna be string in here, uh, and I wonder if we can just do something like uh, this, right? So this is gonna be like an empty vector in here. Uh, so and what we're doing in here. Um, it's going to be very similar, actually, I think. I think it's going to be very similar. Mm. But we need to know where to place things. We need to know where to place things. Mm -hmm. mm. Alright. So I think I want to actually go the like immediate UI route, uh, where we're gonna have like some sort of like immediate UI state um, and uh, a bunch of widgets implemented for it. Uh, and the widgets we're gonna have right now is probably the list, right, and the element within the list. Yeah, the, the list and the element within the list. All right, so uh, let's define some sort of structure called like UI or whatnot, right? And this is where we're gonna have all of these things. 
UI, 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 UI. Okay. <clears throat> so, and what we're gonna store in there? I'm not really sure what, what exactly we're gonna be storing there, but we're gonna be storing some, uh, something there differently. Um, So let's do implementation for the UI, uh, and for the UI I want to have a bunch of methods, like begin, list, uh, right, so it's going to accept, I think it's going to accept mutable self, uh, right, and this one is going to be to do, and end list. Mm, it's going to be also to do, uh, and in here we can have something like list element. Uh, list element and the element is going to be essentially um, I don't know a text I suppose right so it's gonna have a label uh, of a particular text is gonna be str uh -huh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the str but we also need to keep track of the IDs of the elements right uh, this of the element so and what's going to be the id so right now i'm just i'm just not sure so we, we can actually uh, keep it as an id so this is going to be id uh, and here is use size uh, what's interesting is that when you begin a list i want to uh, also keep track of the id of the current like selected elements element uh, right so the current selected element mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, essentially the way you're gonna be rendering the list, right? So we need to we need a way to create the UI, right? A fan uh, new, uh, right? A fan new, but maybe I can just actually derive this entire thing as a default, right? Uh, derive default. Mm. Shouldn't the to-do elements be objects instead of strings? No, they shouldn't. Uh, they don't owe anything to anyone. Containing different properties like state, done, in progress, etc. for each... No, no, they, they shouldn't. They actually don't owe anyone to be anything. So they can be whatever they want, in fact. And we shouldn't force them to be uh, something that they don't want to be. You know what I'm talking about? Man, they would pay you a lot of money in Solana environment. I have no idea what the hell is that. Um, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, and the way I want to actually create the UI, in fact, uh, blockchain. <laughs> Wait, look, look at that. That's the easiest way to actually lose my attention. Just say word blockchain and it just you, you lost my attention. Bye bye. Don't want to even talk to you. Bye bye. Bye. See you around. Bye. Um, so, <clears throat> okay. So we're gonna have something like list uh, current and it's gonna be option uh, use size, right? So maybe we need to actually create something like uh, UI ID, right? I think I wanna have like me type ID, right? And it's gonna be use size in here. I wanna I want it for the for the reasons of like self documentation, right? Uh, the reasons of self documentation. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> Coke chain, yep. Coke chain. <laughs> yep. Coke chain. Uh, nice one. I prefer Coke chain rather than blockchain. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Coke chain is way better. Um, so this is the current list and the way I, by the way i want to render this entire shit is essentially i create the default ui right uh let uh ui uh ui default uh something like this and then i'm just saying okay begin list right and to do cur becomes the current id so now i can say something like uh to do cursor 
since it's your size, I probably can just, you know, copy it in there, so it doesn't matter. And then, at the end, I can say, end the list, right, end the list. And now I don't have to worry about anything, like it's gonna uh, basically do the layouting for me, and so on and so forth. Um, and then, um, interestingly enough, I think we can try to talk this entire logic under a function UI, UI uh, list element, right? UI list element, and what we're going to provide in here, we're going to provide the the index. So I want the entire thing, uh, right? So I'm going to actually put this stuff here uh, to look like this. This is how I want uh, like my to-do list to be rendered, right? I start the list, then I iterate through all the elements and I say that this is the, the current list element uh, and then it's rendered appropriately. So furthermore, I think then below this thing, I wanna have uh, the second list. You know what I'm talking about, the second list. So um, because of that, uh, I wanna do UI begin list. Um, and here we have done, and uh, I suppose we're, we're gonna have something like uh, let mutable done current, and it's gonna be your size, and I don't know, well, we're gonna put zero in there, right? So we're gonna put the zero. Uh, I start this entire thing, it's gonna be done current, and uh, then we're gonna end the list like so. So, and then I'm gonna be iterating through all of the done things. Um, so this is to do's. I think by the same logic, these things should be called dance, right? So uh, the same thing should be called dance. Uh, dan da dance, <laughs> not, not, okay. In dance, um, right, iterate and also enumerate. Iterate and enumerate. Um, and uh, we do UI list element index. There we go, there we go. <clears throat> so this is how it's going to be uh, uh, located. On top of that, I want to have like something to separate this entire stuff. So maybe something like a label, uh, right? So this is going to be like a line that separates uh, both of the list. And uh, maybe I'm going to also have an indication that uh, we're starting rendering the UI and we end in rendering of the UI. So it's going to be something like that. Uh, there we go, and this is roughly the API I want from uh, from the UI subsystem uh, to be able to render this entire thing. So let's just go ahead and implement this thing, and we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Mm, so we don't have a okay. So this is, has to be a comma, and uh, we don't have a method begin. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So fn. Uh, begin. Why right, this one is not done? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What? What the hell has happened with the focus? Uh, no method found. Did I actually properly create it? Well, wait. What are you talking about? Uh, no named begin found. But here it is. Uh, I just created it. This is association, use associated function syntax. Oh yeah, I see. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> All of these languages with their like OP style function calls and stuff like that. Uh, Alright. Mm, so, and the, the same thing goes to list element. Uh, you also have to put like mute cell. Uh, uh, all right, let's, let's do that. Uh, function takes two arguments. Does it really take two arguments? Oh yeah, it also needs to take the uh, the label itself, right? So, and the label is basically this, um, right? Mm. Interestingly enough, um, I actually wanted to be also a vector of strings. Uh, and that means that I have to do two string in here, right? Mm -hmm. Could anyone explain to a noob what's the point of using u size instead of u32, for example? Uh, I think u size uh, may differ depending on the platform, right? U32 is sort of has a fixed size, 32 bits. Uh, but u size, uh, the size of u size depends on the platform. On 32 bit platform, it will be. Uh, 32 bits on 64-bit platform is going to be 64 bits. I think 
the size of u size is roughly the size of the pointer, right? So, um, so I guess. Mm -mm. And what's the point of using that? Well, uh, this is a reserved type for sizes, and you want to be able to index, index the size of the whole RAM, right? And because of that, you may want to have the size type to be the size of the pointer, so we can index the whole RAM if you want. To. If I understand correctly, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah. So, does it answer your question, possessed X? Because it's a good question, actually. I think I think it's a good question, right? So why the fuck do you need like U size and not U32? Well, uh, on U32, uh, with U32 on 64-bit platform, you won't be able to index the whole memory, right? If you will have an array of bytes with the size of the whole RAM, the whole indexable RAM, uh, you won't be able to index the whole array. Yeah. So, uh, so U size for indexing in different platforms, max vector size can be different, right? Yeah, because you have different indexing capabilities. Um, all right. <clears throat> so this one is going to be two string. So label does not exist. Label does not exist. And let's do something like this. Fn uh, label. This one doesn't have to be mutable. Or maybe it will have to be mutable. So this is going to be text. And uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and because of that, we'll have to do something like done. Uh -huh. Maybe I don't have to do it like that because it's going to be already a pointer. Uh, method end not found. Okay. Uh, and here we're going to just do end. Mm hmm. Uh, ID is not used. I mean, I only care about the problems. Why do you have so much errors? Can I borrow as mutable? Oh. Well, at this point, Russ is just intentionally trying to be annoying for like no apparent reason. Uh, okay. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Cool. So when I begin the list, uh, right, one thing I want to check actually, right, I want to assert that you didn't actually start uh, any other list. So it's going to be self uh, list current uh, is uh, none. I think this is how we check that. Right, we want to explicitly disallow the situation when you try to do uh, begin list uh, 69, right, and then begin another list. Uh, with 420, right? So you, you cannot have a nested list, right? So that's precisely what we're trying to disallow in here. And I wonder if, um, you know, docs, um, where is this thing? I need to close this entire step. Assert, does assert accept uh, the message? Does assert accept the message? I think it should be able to uh, accept the message. Yeah, it does accept the message and it's also even formatable. Okay, that's that's cool. So, uh, all right, um, nested lists are not allowed, right? So this is basically what we're going to do in here. So nested lists are not allowed. And after you started this thing, you just do self um, list current uh, is going to be some ID. There we go. Uh, is it compiled? It seems to be compiling. So I might as well try to run. OK, this is useless. <laughs> OK. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so what I'm thinking is that uh, I need to be able to easily like uh, render think things downwards, render things downwards. But I'm not 100% sure how to do that. Uh, maybe we can do that through the label, right? So we have a label. You provide the text, and you can also provide the color pair with which this label is going to be rendered, and then list element is going to use that depending on whether it's current or not and so on and so forth and a label is going to actually update its current position right so um okay uh, what i want to do uh i want to keep track from which position we're actually starting right because we're rendering everything row wise uh we need to know the current row and 
the current column, right? And when you begin the UI, uh, I think we want to specify the row in column position, right? So this is from where we're starting rendering this entire stuff. So from row and column, and here uh, that means self is going to be equal to that stuff. And uh, then I'm going to create a replace with the column. There we go. So you have rows and columns. Beautiful. And as you render the label, as you render the label, <clears throat> Uh, I need to uh, provide the pair in here, and I think pair had a special type. I'm pretty sure it had a special type uh, because color pair accepts a very specific type. So let's actually try to find out. Uh, let's try to find out. And I keep losing my uh, tab from somewhere. Color pair, okay, uh, and it accepts i64. Okay, I guess. I guess it accepts i64, sure. Uh, that means this thing is gonna be i64. All right, and what we're doing in here, uh, we're first of all moving uh, the cursor to row and column, then we uh, enabling this color pair, uh, then we are rendering this text, and then we're disabling this color pair just in, just in case. There we go, so this is how we're gonna be doing all of that. Uh, and on top of that, after, uh, we have to increment the row, right? So we have to increment the row because we're rendering everything downwards. Every time you render something, you have to go downwards. Um, okay, so that makes sense, more or less. So now, uh, I want to render the, uh, the list. Uh, uh, render the list. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Render the list. Uh, so, and, uh, okay, so we need to also check a, a very important thing. We need to check a very important thing. Uh, you can only run the list elements inside of the list, right? So we're gonna assert that uh, self, maybe we don't even need to assert that. Right, because uh, we need to get the current element. Um, so it's going to be something like self, list current, and uh, expect. And I think does option even accept expect? Right, does it even accept uh, accept expect? Uh, option um, expect. There we go. So and yeah, this has expect, and it also gets a message. And message is not formatable. Right. Uh, I think, like, I think Rust got itself into uh, into a really strange situation. The formatting, the variadic formatting, uh, the variadic formatting uh, is done via macros, right? And you cannot have a macro as a method. I don't think so, at least. And when you encounter methods like that, it's almost impossible to have a similar print LN formatting for these methods. And yeah, am I, am I wrong on that? Do, does anyone know? It's, it's kind of a strange situation, right? So they decided to not introduce like a very adic argument stuff uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and you need to come up with a hack, but that only amplifies my point, right? So you need to, like, this kind of hack. You cannot m make uh, the experience seamless, right? So uh, just being able to have, like, access, uh, expect, uh, expect, and simply your message, uh, and so on and so forth. Like, it's literally impossible. You're forced to use this hack, hack, of a separate macro, and on top of that, you have to also take a pointer, and it's really, really inconvenient, right? And for instance, uh, if you just had a message, right, you have a message, hello, right? If you wanted to append uh, a number to this thing, you would do it like this, boom, boom. You see how easy it is? It's very ergonomic and it's very pleasant to work with, right? You had a message, okay, I need to update the message, I, I just do it like that. But in Rust, because of how it got itself into this really re weird situation, now what you have to do? You have to do BAM, BAM, then don't forget, format, uh, that, that. You see how many things you need to do to, to move from one point to another one? And this is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking... 
Every time I point out at things like that, people think I'm saying that it's not possible to do that. It is possible to do that, uh, the thing that you want to do. I'm not talking about impossibility of doing these things. I'm talking about convenience, right? My, my problem with Rust is that it doesn't give a shit about convenience, even when it has nothing to do with safety, right? So, okay, we, we can get into this mindset of safety at all costs and fuck user and fuck convenience because safety is more important. But this is not about safety. It's not even about safety and it's still annoying. You, you see what I'm talking about? It's like it's, it's, you, you don't even have an opportunity to say, oh, it's because it's more safe and safety is more important than convenience. No, it's not even about safety. You see what I'm, what I'm talking about? Like, it's like almost nobody listens to me when I point out these kind of things. And I don't know. You can have multiple. That's what I'm asking. Uh, all right, so I think it's pointless. Anyway, um, um, so what I want to do in here uh, is, so here's the expectation. So I need to expect, uh, all right, something like um, list element um, not allowed to create list elements elements uh, outside of lists right so when we need to do something like this it's going to be right Oh yeah, by the way, thank, thank you for reminding me. All right, so uh, yeah, what we want to do now is ID current ID. Essentially, what I'm doing, so this is the label, and I just need to do self label, uh, label, and the pair is the pair that we can put in here. Okay. So here's the label, and uh, when we end the list, we actually need to empty the list current. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't you pass it as a list? Uh, <laughs> That's a very good question. I'll think about this question. Uh, thank you so much. All right. So when we end everything, I don't think anything needs to be done here right now at least so uh yeah mm -hmm. oh you're still talking about holy shit <laughs> I, th I thought you're talking about something that's going on in the screen okay uh you guys are still talking about that thing all right sure uh Mm -hmm. 
So self row, uh, it says s32, uh, s32. <laughs> it's, it's okay, don't worry about it. Uh, so payer, uh, call a payer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Call a uh -huh, uh -huh. So, and when you actually start the UI, you have to put it like this. So it's going to be zero, zero. Uh, and so now we have a label. Um, and you also have to supply this thing. So it has to be a regular player. Right. So we're rendering the label with a regular player. Uh, all right. So uh, you have a done current. Um, interestingly enough, it says that it's unused. Does it need to be mutable? I mean, oh my god, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, Alright, so I'm gonna be actually disabling this thing. Mm. So this is how we render the, the stuff. Okay, so it seems to be working. So we didn't break anything, it still, it still seems to be working. Uh, I actually, actually want to start from like zero in here. Uh huh. And you know what's cool about this thing, right? So we have actually enclosed what is the list, right? We enclosed what is the list. So that means if I add an, another label in here, it's not going to be part of this list, right? So let me show you, right? I can go over, I cannot go over this line. So I can just have this line in here and I can't go over it. Like it's, it's totally fine, you see? It's, Perfect, fine. Uh, and now I can try to render a different list in here. Um, and here's the interesting thing. Um, here is the interesting thing. Um, I think because the IDs will overlap, the IDs will overlap, um, we won't be able to use that very easily. So that means I'll have to always add like 69, 69 to the index uh, to make them like unique like that, if you know what I'm talking about, to make them unique like that. Uh, there we go. And we don't have any done uh, issues. So let's actually add something done to the party, All right? So this one is going to be something like that. Uh, and uh, vector. Right. So what is done? Uh, what is done? Mm. So I started the stream, right? I started the stream. So what? What else? Uh, start the stream. Uh, have a breakfast. Have a breakfast. What else I've done today? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I guess we can have like two of them. Uh, all right. Got bread. I didn't get bread, to be fair. Uh, you make me want to go build something. Good stuff. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much for three months of tier one subscription. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I don't eat bread at all. So hello, Golgothan. How are you doing? Uh, so, mm, I mean, I made a cup, of, I need to make a cup of tea, but I actually made uh, another cup of tea. So I might as well actually make two of them, right? So one is done, another one to go, uh, breadless. Well, how do you think I lost my weight? So, how do you think does it work? Uh, so let's continue. Um, you just eat less carbs. No bread, only kasha. By the way, true. Um, I eat a lot of kasha. So interestingly enough, interestingly enough, um, hmm. I want to have like a focus between different parts like between the things that are done and that are not done oh and by the way since we have a, a system of labels uh it's actually relatively easy to add something like um to do like it's gonna be ui uh label uh to do right, so this is these are the things that needs to be done uh a regular player uh and that one is going to be done right uh so 
can see we have a very sim simple UI framework in here and uh, it is working. So you have a to-do and you have it done. Um, to be fair, it doesn't... I would like to sort of prefix them like a little bit with something, if you know what I'm talking about. So we might as well actually uh, do something like this. So where is the... Okay, here's the label and I can do something like this. Uh, like this. Uh, so indicating that this stuff is not done yet. All right. Uh -huh. And of course, this is, has to be done. Uh -huh. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Legitness. Easy. Fucking, fucking easy. Is that cool? I think it's pretty good. Goddamn cool. Mm. Mm, I mean, it's kind of it. It, co it looks kind of weird because if something is done, isn't it supposed to have like a cross inside of this thing? Um, I think I think it has to have that. Uh, so maybe we need to have some sort of a style of rendering for the um, for these things. Hmm. So essentially, when you begin list, you can uh, define a prefix, right? So something like prefix, str. Um, and I wish I could just set the prefix uh, as str, but unfortunately, I'm not sure how to deal with lifetimes because that means the str should not uh, live shorter than the UI itself, if you know what I'm talking about. So that means we'll have to deal with a lot of, uh, you know, lifetime shit, but maybe not. We'll see, we'll see. So we have a list current, uh, and also list current should have um, the prefix. Uh, so we might as well actually introduce something like struct list, all right? Uh, this is a struct list and it has an ID and it has a prefix which is str. Um, <clears throat> mm, str and of course um, let's, let's just give it a try so it's going to be something like list and let's go to the compilation errors okay str uh, needs a lifetime okay so let's see if we can do it like that mm -hmm. so expected lifetime there we go, we're going down a huge rabbit hole. Uh, maybe it actually can be derived like automatically or something, but I I don't know. Uh, implicit allowed it, uh, not allowed in here, so help indicate anonymous lifetime, sure. Can I put anonymous lifetimes here as well? Probably. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Mm, wait. Wasn't it actually saying something like uh, indicate the anonymous lifetime? So maybe I have to put it like this. Okay, I see. So now this is an ID and I wanna actually construct uh, a list out of that. So this is gonna be ID uh, and this is gonna be the prefix. Right, this is gonna be the prefix uh, and infer an appropriate uh, cannot infer an appropriate lifetime for lifetime parameter due to conflicting requirements. Uh, so I'm thinking, can I just like, um, yeah, so this thing has to have a particular lifetime and uh, yeah. Mm. So yeah. I really don't want to use static because that kind of limits what kind of prefixes I can put in there. Uh, maybe uh, I want to allow people dyna dynamically generate prefixes. <sighs> but of course, it isn't safe. All right, so let's go go away from here. And to be fair, prefixes. Um... You know what? What what the fuck am I doing? Like. I think I'm an idiot. Yeah, I think I'm an idiot. Let's actually go back. Uh, like it's it's kind of like against the whole point of the uh, like immediate UI actually. Uh, right. So what we want to do instead 
is actually added at these prefixes here. Yeah, that's what it's precisely what we want to do. Okay, so it's going to be something like this. Um, of course, it's going to be. Um, mm -hmm. uh, all right, so let's put it like that. Um, okay, um, let's remove this entire step. Uh huh. Let's remove that entire step. Um, List current is none. Uh huh. It's because it has to be an option, All right? So this is an option now. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm doing it here, and when something is done, and when something is done, it's gonna be something like this. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So. That's actually way better, and I just need to remove that code from here. So now it could be just a label. Um, okay, so as you can see now, it doesn't need to be customizable. I can just put it like whatever there, All right? So that makes sense. Um, it just depends on the specific list that uh, we're working on. Hello, Gcapli532. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? Doing? Um, so what's gonna be the next thing? I wanna be able to actually um, render this entire stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's put it this way. Uh, right now this is zero. Um, and the index is gonna be... Mm -hmm. So this is the current list and it's never gonna be zero. So that will get rid of the highlight for the second one. Right, there we go. So now you don't you don't have a highlight for the second one. Cool. So what, you know what I want to do? I want to be able to press enter uh, on to do's and move them to done. Right. So if I press on any of them, it will become done, uh, and it will move to the uh, to the to the done list. Uh, so let's quickly try to implement that. So I think I'm gonna actually expand the um, the list element function to return boolean. Right, to return boolean. So, and that boolean will indicate whether the user actually pressed enter while, while this thing was highlighted. Um, backward is still carbs though. It's probably just a much slower release of energy because of fiber. Yeah, I think it's a, there's a name for, the, for that, like a glycine index or something. I, I forgot the name of this thing. Right, so, yeah, it's a much slower carbs. Um, All right, so we need to be able to tell the UI framework what is the current key we're handling, you know? What is the current key we're handling? Uh, I think uh, we're going to have uh, the key somewhere here. So this one is going to be option uh, and it's going to be I32. Right. So this is going to be something like I32. Uh, and uh, every time we get the key, Mm -hmm. Every time we get the key. Although, you know what? We don't need this shit, actually. We don't need to keep track of this shit. Look, look, look. Uh, if you press the enter, right, so I suppose it's gonna be something like this, right? Uh, what we can do, we can essentially grab the current element and append it to the done list, right? So we can do to do's, to do current, all right, and then maybe dance and push them in here, right? Uh, for now, I'm gonna just clone them, right? Uh, for now, I'm just gonna clone them. I'm not gonna like move them per se, I just wanna see how it works, uh, right? And of course, this entire stuff, uh -huh, because dance is not mutable. Um, Okay, and now you have to make them to go. Uh, all right, so... Okay, so now if I press on any of these things, it will, yeah, it automatically adds it to done. All right, but it doesn't remove that specific element from there. Uh, right, it doesn't, yeah. <laughs> it goes also out of the screen, so... All right, so that's actually pretty cool. So that's already working, right? So that stuff already working. And it took us like uh, 120 lines of code within curses, right? So, eh, pretty straightforward, I don't know. Um, maybe it would be kind of cool to um, port it to Termion. Uh, we'll see. 
so uh, all right so now I want to um, I want to remove the to do yeah, right right so what I'm doing I need to remove the to do I wonder if in uh, vector I can just yeah I should be able to just remove the thing uh, remove uh, there is straight up remove does it return the element that we are removing Okay, so, and it also disowns that element as far as I can see, right? Removes the returns the element position index within the vector, shifting all elements after it to the left. And as you can see, yeah, it, it literally moves it out of the uh, out of the vector, so you can move it to the different vector. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Hmm. What is it's a default case, right? You see, so we're matching the keys. If the key is Q, we're doing that. If Q is that, we're doing that. But if none of these things matched, we're just basically indicating, okay, so this matches everything and we're doing nothing. Make sense? Um, yeah. So it's like a, it's a default uh, branch in switch case, like in C and C++ or any C-like languages. Uh, it's a default branch. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I wanted to do? Does anyone remember what I wanted to do? I wanted to... I wanted to remove... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I need to remove uh, a thing at a particular index. Uh, all right, so when I press the enter, to do uh, remove... Uh, and I think... What's interesting is that it may... It basically will crash if this thing is not possible to remove, right? So maybe... Yeah, panic if index is out of bound. Uh, can you just not panic instead? Like vec remove. Uh, hmm. Delete. So remove will always panic. Hmm. Very and actually kind of cool. If there is a version of remove, so there is a pop. And pop actually returns option, right? So, uh, uh -huh. swap remove. Mm. Okay, so there must be a function for that. I just don't know how it's called. Uh, all right, so rust vec remove without panic. Okay, Google, show me, show me what you've got. Billion safe way to remove uh, uh, to way to move out of factor. Okay get remove um, mm, yeah might be reason for panicking why isn't implemented like option uh, vec drain range of areas that, uh, that were removed uh, okay let's take a look at drain I just don't want to check the, the boundaries and stuff like that it's just like not something I want to do uh drain um create a draining iterator that removes the specified range in the vector and yields the removed uh, items okay uh that's actually very interesting so uh what range could be range bounds all right uh range bounds hmm mm. So when this thing actually, I suppose, removes everything. Uh, okay, so I guess I'll have to check everything myself. Uh, right. If to do current is uh, less than to do slen, right? Uh, I'll have to remove this thing, right? and. I suppose then push it into into the done. There we go. Just push it into the done. It should be should be like that. Mm -hmm. All right. And it works. 
and yeah, we moved everything. And now it panicked. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. Uh, why did it panic? Um, because I don't think I was trying to access some of this element. Okay, if you don't have anything to do, right? Uh, if you don't have anything to do, basically it's not gonna do anything, so I'm not sure. So, oh, because it's gonna be, okay, min minus one, all right. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, uh, if to do current, so basically to do current becomes kind of invalid when your list is empty. Uh, I wonder how can we even do all of that. Right. So if it's greater, we're almost documenting. If it's uh, less than to do actually plus one, less than to do slen. Uh, that means we can, we may want to actually do that to do, yeah, to do plus one, okay. <laughs> okay, so, oh, speaking of, by the way, speaking of, somebody, uh, you know, talked about reset. I actually typed reset blindly completely right now and it worked, right? So my terminal was screwed up uh, and I just typed reset and it completely reset it. Uh, Alright, so it's gonna be cargo run and boom, 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 and everything seems okay. Uh, though we actually don't clean the terminal, I think we actually need to start cleaning the terminal. Uh, right, so I think it's gonna be something like erase. Right, so we're erasing everything and then we're refreshing. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Oh, okay, now, now it looks fine. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So that's actually pretty cool. And boom, uh, and boom. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, we want to be able to also switch the focus between the uh, like to do and done, right? And for for instance, if uh, I actually mistakenly marked something as done, I want to be able to bring it back to to do. Uh, so and that uh, that way we need to introduce a system that lets you focus between to do and done. Uh, right, so, um, by the way, I think the time has come to do a committee committee for this entire thing, uh, and then push a push and actually let everyone try to use this to do app, uh, because people, I, I saw people in the chat were interested in this kind of thing, so uh, let's actually quickly do that. So it's gonna be readme. Uh, the license is gonna be MIT, uh, right, MIT. Uh, readme, all right, simple. Uh, interactive to do uh, app, <clears throat> simple interactive uh, to do app in Rust. Mm. I mean, it's more of a, like a description. Uh, uh, simple interactive to do app in Rust uh, terminal. Right. So the application is like a disease. It's terminal. <laughs> Ah, anyway, <clears throat> so, uh, so do, <laughs> uh, quick, uh, quick start. uh, console and you just do cargo run. You see how easy it is to use Rust application? You just run the single command and it just works. Just works. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> All right, simply way to do it to do in Rust. Okay, we can actually maybe. Eh, eh. We also need to have a controls. Okay, so let's actually introduce controls early on. Uh, right. So here we're gonna have um, key, keys, uh, description. Right. Description. Description. Um, something like. I think it has to be like KVD. Uh, KVD. Uh -huh. mm. Are you on Windows or Linux? I'm on Mac OS. I'm a Mac OS user. So this is going to be S, uh, and this is going to be WS, right? WS. Um, okay. 
Hi, is it possible to watch this stream again? No, uh, it's a one-time only stream, I'm sorry. Uh, description did I... Okay, description. Th this is precisely how I installed that stupid TypeScript. So, <laughs> this is precisely why, how that happened. Uh, fuck. I actually looked into that package, like, uh, after the stream, uh, and I think, I think it was safe. I just downloaded the, the tarball. The tarball didn't contain anything, like, at all. It was just, like, some doodles around, so probably some, some person was trying to just, like, learn TypeScript. That's what it felt like. <laughs> uh, right. Move up and down. Right. Move up and down. So another one is probably gonna be enter. Um, Maybe, maybe not enter, but uh, what the fuck is this shit? It has to be like this. Um, okay, so this is gonna be KBD, and in here what we have? Uh, Q. Quit. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. And also probably enter, I suppose. Enter. Uh, KBD. Uh, it's just like perform the action, I suppose, perform, perform the action depending on the context, right? Perform, uh, perform an action uh, on the, on the highlighted uh, element, oh, the highlighted UI element, what was that supposed to be, right? So, so that's basically the controls, that's basically the controls, and uh, can we do a committee committee, right? So, uh, uh -huh. ready, set, a go, and uh, let me create the repo for everyone who's interested in this kind of stuff. <laughs> to do RS, so simple interactive terminal to do app, and this one is going to be absolutely freaking public. Absolutely freaking public. Okay, so uh -huh. uh, add origin like this. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can find this application in here if you're interested in this entire shit. Uh, CMD project. Writing to do application in Thrust. Gotcha hyper. Source uh, code. And remember, you won't be able to watch the stream the second time. Right, so it's only uh, watch now stream. Yeah, so you better stick in. How do you say that in English? Stick around! <laughs> I've, I've watched too many uh, wrong videos. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> you want to stick around for as long as possible. Um, got you hyper. <laughs> I don't speak English, what do you want from me? Uh, no, I want to stick. Okay, you are allowed to. You are allowed to, sure. Uh, so, you know what I want to do? I want to actually make a cup of tea. So, uh, I want to make a cup of tea. Uh, alrighty. So, it's going to be small break. Um, how many minutes? I think I'm going to actually go for five minutes because I'm a little bit tired. So, uh, right. So, it's going to be five minutes break. And after the five minutes break, we're going to be back to back champions of the arena so yeah there we go right let's continue um <clears throat> what were we doing i don't quite remember um how many stars did we farm only one star i spent two hours okay i'm joking uh doesn't matter i don't care about the stars <laughs> Mm, lactose, it's a form of glucose as far as I know, so it's, it's basically sugar, yes, it, it is basically sugar. 
even though it may not it may not taste sweet as sweet as like uh, sugar, but it's like it has a lot of glucose. Um, I think it can be like decomposed into glu uh, glucose is and something else, right? But I'm not um, not a chemist. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, what I want to be able to do, I want to be able to actually um, crates are not downloading. Why? The, what does it say? What does it say? Uh, did it fuck up something? Uh, that's very strange. Um, time out. Oh shit. Is, is that something I can fix? Is that something I could fix? Or maybe it's a problem with cr uh, the crate I.O. or something like that. Um, mm -mm -mm. I don't I don't really know. I don't really know what to do, to be fair. So it should work, I think. Um if someone else actually Russian Russians block something again. Oh yeah, classic. Uh, so probably Roskomnadzor key combat. Trying to protect your children from the dangers of the internet. <sighs> Alright. Mm -mm -mm. It's our internet from Rust, yes. <laughs> well, um, that's a pretty interesting decision, Rust Um Alright, so I want to be able to actually decide what is currently selected. So let's introduce enumeration uh, of our nation uh, and it's going to be called focus, right? So and in the focus we're going to have either to do or done, right? So and we can clearly see, um, not clearly see, but we can... Ooh, shit. This is actually kind of cool. Um, yeah, uh, let me let me try to do the following thing. Mm. So let mute focus and by default the focus is going to be to do. And here is the interesting thing. We can actually display both to do and done simultaneously, but we can make something way cooler. We can actually make something way cooler. So we can switch upon the current uh, focus, right? So it's going to be match focus. Uh, and then you're going to have focus to do. And if the focus is to do, we're just rendering the to-do list like that yeah yes like that otherwise if the focus is done you're rendering the done list done 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 we need to create a to-do app when every time you mark something as done it plays the sound done done i'm sorry it's it's dumb i mean <laughs> uh anyways uh <clears throat> Uh, and in here, yeah, we're gonna have like a done car. Uh -huh. Done or cake. Is that like a reference that I don't, don't recognize? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm boomer. Like every time I see a reference in the chat that I do not recognize, I feel like a boomer. <laughs> God damn. Um, so... I guess that's it, actually, believe it or not. If you try to uh, render this thing, uh, I mean compile this thing and run this thing, it will only show you to do's. And what's funny is that it, it basically removes them and there's no way to just show them. Right, so let's try to handle tab. Uh, in case of a tab, what's gonna... I have a cool idea, by the way. So it's kind of difficult to print fdebug in, uh, in in cursus applications, right? So for instance, if I want to print fdebug the key, uh, I won't be able to see shit in this mist, right? So um, for instance, yeah, well, I mean, I kind of see this kind of stuff, but it's really inconvenient. You know what's a better way to print fdebug? Basically push the key into a freaking to-do list. Um, so. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good idea. Let me show you. So it's gonna be something like that. It's gonna be key. And there we go. There we go. And, uh, and it doesn't compile. Okay, so to do s. Right, to do s. Uh, okay, well, let's try to run it in Emacs because then I will be able to. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't have to be a reference. Right, it doesn't have to be a reference. Uh, to, 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 to. Right, and if I press tab. It's actually 9. Tab is equal to 9 for some reason. I wonder why though. Okay. Escape 27. Okay, escape is 27. And I can now move this entire shit in here. 
Huh, interestingly is that when I remove, I think I need to... I think I need to clump the to-do current. Yeah, I need to clump the to-do current. Uh, so can I do something like... Okay, it was removed. Uh, uh, then CMP. Uh, I think you can do something like this. Clamp between zero and to do len minus one, but it, then it may not work actually. Uh, okay, if to do current is greater or equal to do len, uh, right, if it's greater or equal to do len, um, mm -hmm. but what if it became zero then? What if it became zero? That means and okay. Uh, mm, okay, so I'm not gonna focus on this one right now, so uh, should be fine. Okay, so let's actually try to handle the um, the nine, I suppose. The nine. Um, oh wait, maybe tab. I can literally interpret it as tab. Yeah, I should be able to interpret it as tab. Uh, focus, um, focus, um, toggle. Yeah, let's actually introduce like a method toggle for the focus. I think it's going to be a good idea, more or less. Implement focus, and this one is going to be toggle, uh, and this one is going to return self, uh, and this one is going to accept self, actually. Um, yeah, you can keep it like that. So, uh, match self if the focus is to do return focus done uh, otherwise it's gonna be done to do right you see we toggle between the focuses 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 i don't know uh all right uh okay so if i press tab there we go i can switch between these things uh okay and this doesn't work because yeah we also need to actually handle these things slightly differently all right. Uh, so you, if you press up and down, all of this stuff should actually. Hmm. This one is interesting. Uh, huh. I have an idea. We need a function. We need a, some sort of function that accepts the current focus. Right. It accepts the current focus, uh, and it also accepts the current list. Right. Uh, list is, um, is it has to be mutable, I think, yeah, I think it has to be mutable, so it's a vector of strings, uh, and then the list current, which is basically mutable use size, right, and uh, this is basically where we're gonna do all of these actions, though, mm, once you have this kind of stuff, once you have this kind of stuff, maybe you don't need the focus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you don't really need the focus. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You don't really need the focus. Uh, so we need to have something like list up. Right, so this is a list up. Uh, then we may have something like list down. Uh -huh. And then list enter. But that means we'll have to move it to a different place and whatnot. Mm, so in case of a list enter, I didn't think we need a separate function for this. All right, list up uh, is essentially this thing, right? So this is a list up. Uh, but instead of to do, we just do to do list. To do, to do, to do, to do. Uh, and this is going to be the down. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and this one is going to create a place to do with list. Cool. Uh, interestingly, I didn't think this is, has to be mutable, right? It doesn't have to be mutable. Uh, and only these things has to be have to be mutable. All right. So, let's go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the music is actually kind of cool. Uh, 
Wait just a second. How do I control the volume of the music? Oh yeah, there we go. Mm. So I need to take a look at the focus. Right, and if the focus is uh, to do, right, uh, list up uh, to do, to do current. Uh -huh. Otherwise, done, done. I wish the focus was actually some sort of an index in the array of to do's or dance, it would be actually way more convenient, but I mean, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So this one could be something like this. Uh -huh. yeah. So match focus, uh, focus to do, uh, this down, to do, tood, uh, to do current. Uh -huh. And this one, I can query replace to do with done. All right. Um, so let's match focus. Uh, and in here, focus to do. Right, if the to do is less, then we're moving it there. And then focus done. If done current less than done's length um, I guess we're moving um, dance to to do back right, to do push so as you can see we're just moving them around or something like that mm, and with tab we're switching between to do and done so yeah that's that's pretty cool so let's go to the compilation of our nation and it doesn't compile so this is a single list uh, another one to do dance uh -huh. s uh, anything else mm -hmm. so cmp is apparently not needed what about this one to do current and oh my god yeah of course this is a, such an important issue unnecessary parenthesis yeah you have to put that on top uh mismatch because this thing is that one uh-huh okay this is another thing in here uh-huh uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, so and interestingly here you don't really need list. Mm. Okay, so that means we'll have to go another round of this step. Uh -huh. Another round of that step. Mm. Oh, I see, I'm an idiot. So it has to be something like this then. All right, so, uh, okay. And looks more or less okay. And then I switch here and I move s um, some of them here and here they are here is no, uh, not done. All right, so yeah, isn't it cool? I think it's pretty cool. So then you go here, here are the duns. Um, Mm, let's do a committee committee. Uh, so we have a couple of like delete trailing white spaces. Might as well actually do something like Rust format the buffer, format the buffer, uh, and let's do a committee committee. So what did we implement in, in this specific case? Um, I think we implemented the focus system, right? So we can basically switch between the, uh, the current tab, but maybe it shouldn't be like a focus let's actually call it tab yeah i think i think that's a good name for this thing and we even use tab key for switching the tab right so uh let me query replace uh, focus with tab um actually it should be something like this yeah boom 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 um and now if i try to um do that so we have to do tab and done tab you can switch between them uh huh. Mm hmm. Implement the um, tab system. The tab system. You know what would be cooler? Holy shit! I have a very cool idea. Chat, chat. You won't believe. 
It's gonna be so goddamn fucking epic. Look, 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 look. Let's get rid of this like lame to do done things, right? So let's actually put it like this. Um, maybe, yeah, it's gonna be like this. If you are in to do, you see something like this, right? So it's gonna be done. Uh, otherwise, to do, done. But we actually want them to have like a uh, same spacing, if you know what I mean. Uh, right, so. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me move it like that. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, uh, and it's a very simple trick, by the way, but look, 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 look. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That's actually super cool. Uh, okay, so let me let me try another thing in here. Um, I wonder, so there's, we ensure that there is a space between them. Maybe fuck the space, right? So let's not put any space in there. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, it looks a little better now. It looks a little bit better. So I also wanted to do... Mm. Yeah, I wanted to, do, to put some space in there uh, between them. So it's going to be UI uh, label. And it could be the same size as that stuff, right? So... Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. UI label and I forgot what do you put in your oh, yeah you have to specify the regular player or whatnot. We could probably generate this thing. If you know what I mean? But I mean nah, it's actually easier to copy paste this code, believe it or not. It is actually easier to copy paste it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Alright, so So we also need to update the command uh, command stuff. Uh, kbd tab kbd, slash kbd, uh, switch the current tab right uh, switch between the to do and done tabs right uh -huh. okay improve improve the current tab indication so here's that uh, document tabs tab control right, document tab control i'm gonna push that right at the repo you can find the source code of this thing in here if you're interested of course um, mm -hmm. all right so i think i want to uh, fix the bug where if you remove the last one the cursor is busted so it's kind of it's kind of weird in my opinion so you have to oh yeah i wonder if you are like in a in a busted cursor and you press enter yet again nothing happens actually so that's fine i guess and in the second tab is also fine so all right so yeah nothing much to say to be fair um but it's kind of it's a little bit annoying it's a little bit annoying if you know what i mean Mm -hmm. So, and essentially, it should be uh, as easy as um, mm -hmm. if uh, to do current is greater or equal than to do len, but there is also a situation when to do len may become empty, uh, right? Um, you want to assign to do current to this thing minus one. Like this, right, so, and that's basically the condition in here, uh, right, and in here you're gonna have the opposite situation, so instead of to do, you're gonna have dun dun dun, so, and that should be a sufficient uh, fix, so if I go in here, it automatically moves there, and so on and so forth. Okay, perfect, absolutely perfect. All right, so, and to be fair, I think I know the way to abstract this thing away. I think I do know the way. Uh, so basically, we're going to have a function that accepts two uh, lists, right? The destination and source list, right? Uh, okay. So list up, list down, uh, and we're going to have a list transfer, right? So and inside of this thing, um, we're going to have two lists, uh, list 
SRC, maybe destination, right? So we're going to follow the uh, Intel assembly convention where the destination is the left one and the source is the right one. Right, DST, um, mutable vector of strings, right? So then list SRC, uh, vector string, there we go. And we also need the current one, right? And the current one is usually list SRC, right? List SRC current. Mm hmm okay so let's put it this way list src current uh, use size and it has to be also mutable all of that has to be mutable okay so i'm gonna query replace to do's with the list src boom then we're replacing dance with the list at dst so because it's a destination uh, dance list dst boom and the to do car list src car boom All right so this is the list transfer which allows you to transfer element the current element from one to another one uh, all right so maybe it will make the code a little bit more compressed in here so if you press enter on to do that means the destination is dance the source is to do's and the element that you're transferring from to do's is to do current right and you can compress this entire thing right okay so that's actually a pretty good idea so that's a pretty easy way to compress this entire stuff and because it's a single line you can just do it like that actually there we go all right and in case of done you are currently in a tab done so if you press enter in done you transfer from to do from done to to do so it's going to be least transfer uh to do's uh to do's dance uh done current there we go so that's how easily i actually compressed all of that so we have like separate actions and it's relatively relatively convenient to work with i guess um uh okay that's pretty cool mm -hmm. so what else do we have in here it doesn't compile uh of course because um list src uh because this one has to be like uh done like this uh-huh another one uh-huh and another one another one uh-huh and all of that has to be mutable okay i think i can even use a little bit of emacs magic to make all of that mutable at once uh right and there we go everything seems to be working and yep it is working and yep that, that's cool cool it will be also kind of cool to have a uh, like an undo system so I think we, we reached the point where uh, we need to start like adding like to do's in here to not forget what to, uh, what to implement, what kind of features to implement. Uh, undo systems. So we definitely need to have an undo system at some point. Um, we need to be able to uh, actually add uh, new elements to, to do. I wonder if it makes sense to add new elements to done. Maybe like when you are in done tab, it doesn't make any sense to add new elements. When you add new elements, you're always in uh, like, it always has to be a to-do, right? So um, maybe we also need to keep track uh, when it was done. Keep track of date when the item uh was done right was done so that would be actually kind of cool to keep track of that um so uh save um persist this state uh this state yeah, yeah yeah so save the system persist the state of the application right so maybe we're gonna save all of that into like a textual files textual file and like load from a text file and maybe you will have to provide that file as a command line argument for for the system um yeah so that's the things we need to have in here do we need anything else um so the undo system, I don't think undo system is that important. So the first one is probably this. I want to be able to persist the state of the application somehow. Uh, then I want to be able to add new elements. Uh, also, uh, edit um, the elements. Right. Um, so we already started to call them items. So I actually might as well go with items. Right. 
edit the items uh, and yeah that's roughly the things we want to have in here mm -hmm. so um, um, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. okay uh, compress uh, list transfer logic this transfer logic and I'm going to push that right into the repo you can find the source code in here if you're interested in this uh, kind of stuff deleting uh, to do's right all right deleting items I completely forgot about that so we need to also uh, add new items uh, delete items um, maybe archive items like archive done items uh, but I mean they're already archived in some sense right they're in a separate tab um, Mm, I don't know. So I think I don't want to like have too many features in here. So it's just gonna be something. Uh, okay, more work, more work. Mm -hmm. Do I want to change them up? Um, mm. Maybe it does make sense to snitch them up. Mm. Did you know that Twitch uh, tags include lesbian? Well, it includes a lot of tags and uh, I didn't see any problems with these tags. Mm. So let's, uh, let's actually snitch up the to-dos. Right, so for those who doesn't know, uh, I have a pretty cool thing called snitch which basically collects to do's in your source code and reports them as issues so that's precisely what i'm gonna do in here so snitch report uh prepend body introduced uh well i mean it's just like yeah just just report all of that right and basically it will go through all of the to do's and ask you do you want to report it right and i'm gonna answer yes to all of them and it will uh use github api to actually create all of these to do's as issues in the original repo there they are so on top of that for each of them it will create a commit where it associates the to do with the corresponding issue so if you open uh, this entire thing in uh, in here so here are the to do's and here are the corresponding issues uh, they are associated with and uh, since we created like a separate commits for this entire stuff uh, if i push this entire thing into the um, into the repo they will cross reference the issues and if you go to one of these uh, issues you would see that commit in here so if you know the to do you know the issue number and if you know the issue number you know where to do is located because the commit is associated here so they basically it creates like a uh, bi-directional association between the to do in the source code and the issue uh in the issue tracker so yeah so check it out so it's completely open source i developed it a long time ago i constantly use it for my uh, development process so yeah, so it's quite convenient. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it also has different subcommands, like you can list all of the to-dos that you have in here, um, and so on and so forth. It pairs really well with my CM thingy, which allows you to jump to lines that have this specific format, right? So I can jump in Vim in here and stuff like that. So. Uh, anyways, anyways, I think I want to be able to persist the state, right? So that's what we need to do in here. And how are we going to persist the state? Um, so let's implement, let's actually pick uh, a key, right? So maybe that key is going to be E, right? So let's put it like this, it's going to be E key. Uh, and... <clears throat> uh, to, 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 and... Uh, I think for now I'm going to just open the file and I'm going to save done and to do elements to the file. The question is, what's going to be the format of the file? I don't want to overcomplicate the format. If you know what I'm talking about, I want it to be super simple. Mm, right. So maybe, so this one is going to be something like to do. Uh, maybe we're going to have something like to do uh, dot uh, hello world to do uh, foo bar and so on and so forth and some of the elements are going to be done 
some of them uh, are going to be uh, to do and some of them are going to be done. So and basically the parser is going to iterate through these elements and whatever is done is to do is going to put into to do list and whatever is done is going to put into the done list. And this format is actually super easy to dump as well, right? It could be actually it's essentially CSV, is it not? Yeah, we can actually use CSV. Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, let's use CSV. And because of that, uh, this entire thing is going to be something like uh, like this. And this has to be like that. Uh, do we have an easy to use CSV parser or something? Uh, and in the future, we probably like for dance, we're going to have like a date, right? Like today, I don't know, like uh, 20, 21, 06, 21 and whatnot. All right, so... I don't want to implement my own CSV parser, but I know that Rust people tend to overcomplicate things that must be simple. So I'm actually kind of afraid to search for CSV. It's probably going to have shit ton of uh, traits, uh, abstract interfaces, and uh, uh, you have to have a reader from the. Uh, you just go through the records and. Single records is can fail. Burnt Sushi. I think I recognize this person. I love to code. Following one person. I don't know who that is. But must be a very important person. Uh, Alright. Mm. CSV Core, CIs, Benches, Reader serializer, something that should be a single file, something that should be a single file. Um, shit, in other sorts, this is a primarily tests. This is a primarily test, so. Mm -hmm. mm. So there's the serializer, serializer. CSV CSV hmm. I think I'm gonna stick with my format because the beauty of that for format is that you don't have to depend on uh, external dependency and what you have to look for is just prefix to do. Like every line has a prefix to do. So that means uh, if you have a special characters in here, you just put them anywhere here and you don't have to think about escaping or anything like that. Though it's kind of difficult to add the, the dates, uh, but maybe the dates could be done like somewhere here, right? For, for the to do, it's going to be like, like this 2021, um, 0621, right? So. Yeah, done. Yeah, then can have like something like this in here. So very well specified format. And yeah, I think we're going to go like that. But not for now. We're not going to have dates right now. Uh, okay, go. Mm. So I want to have a function. Uh, dredge dredge subscribed a tier one uh, sub. Thank you. Thank you so much for tier one subscription and welcome to our epic Rust Club. How about that? How about that? Isn't that cool? I think it's got them fucking cool, mate. My god. Um, so, not a PHP club. We're not programming in PHP right now. So, it is what it is. And it isn't what it isn't. So, what I want to have, by the way, um, so this thing indicates not only the tab, actually, it indicates the status. So, what if we rename this entire thing to status? Status done or uh, status uh, to do. Right, and it's going to be used both for uh, the current focus, what's the, the current tab, and also uh, for the items. Right, so we're going to have a function that basically accepts uh, a line as an input. 
uh, it accepts the line as an input and it returns you a pair. Actually, it will return you an optional pair because it, uh, this parsing may fail. Uh, and it will contain the status of this thing and the uh, the title of the um, of the item, right? So um, parse line. Um, maybe let's call it like parse. It's called parse item. So this is our item. So and then through this status you will know to which uh, vector you have to push uh, this entire thing right so status now has two purposes it indicates the current tab and it also indicates the status of the item so it's it's pretty much the same thing right status tab and yeah um okay let's actually go to the compilation errors this one is going to be to do of course uh, right this one's going to be to do so uh, because of that, like big tab is status. Uh, I'm actually trying to do something like this. Uh, and do we have any errors? Okay, so everything's okay, but we still have tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so as you can see, tab is a variable of a type status and that's actually intentional. All right, all right. Mm. Um, actually, let me do this indeed, project. Uh, uh -huh. or one sender so the cool thing about this stuff is that if you just do to do uh today right it will point at you but then you can uh, redirect it to somebody else and it will point at that person okay that's actually cool so uh what uh to do macro does okay it basically crashes the application when the execution of the application goes to this point yes reminding you that you need to implement this function right it will remind you to that you need to implement this function so um, right. so we have the uh, main function here and you call a full function right and then full function is not implemented and i just mark it as to do uh, right, and if I try to compile this entire thing, it's going to be my RS. Uh, and as you can see, it crashed, uh, saying that it's not implemented yet. And if you jump to the place where it crashed, uh, right, it jumps here. There we go. So, does it answer your question? Hopefully, it does. Uh, so, it just reminds you that you forgot to implement this function when the execution goes there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, I suppose I want to actually um, maybe also render. Well, I mean, when it comes to rendering this entire stuff, uh, it doesn't have to be very complicated. Mm -hmm. So, when I press E, I need to open a file. All right. Uh, Rust writing to file. I can never remember how to do that. So there's stdfs file Rust by example. Okay, mm, that's a good example. That's a bad example. I mean, mm, so we just open the file. Okay. So we're opening the file, uh, and here we're gonna have just the to do. Right. So here's the to do. Uh, I think we need to create the file. Yeah, yeah, we need to create it, All right? So we're creating it, and maybe we'll also have to uh, import this into I think, All right? We create, and we're also writing it all. And I think I want to use like a write ln macro, All right? So first, I need to do. I need to iterate through to do's. Um, uh, in to do's iter, in to do's iter, and write a len uh, file this is a macro uh, and in here it's gonna depend so this one is gonna be to do and then we'll just bring this thing in here so this is the to do uh, items and then we're gonna have done items so it's gonna be done uh, done 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 so it's not gonna work i think you have to import some sort of trait for for that to work properly um so we'll see so the compiler will tell us um, mm, 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 mm. So it's gonna be built. Uh, this one has to be done. Mm -hmm. 
So cannot use. Okay, so we can unwrap this entire thing. Maybe uh, expect. Ah, eh, let's just unwrap it. Whatever. I, I, I'm not in the mood to actually put uh, a message there. Uh, okay, std io write. Use std io write. Uh huh. So what do we have in here? Uh huh. Everything seems to be okay. okay. All right. So if now I try to run uh, this thing and I do e and I look into this stuff, I've got to do. And here is the to do containing all of the items that we had, right? To do, write the to do app, buy a bread, uh, a single one, right? Uh, make a cup of tea, start the stream, have a breakfast, make a cup of coffee. And, and yeah, as you can see, so all of that got saved, um, you know, appropriately. So uh, now, 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 now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thing I want to do is uh, I want to comment it out, right? I want to comment it out and uh, implement a command line system, command line system, uh, which will allow us to accept arguments. Uh, so I'm going to remove this entire thing. So this is going to be simply uh, vector new, right? So here's that. Uh, vector new and mm -hmm. so it's going to vector new to do's and dance and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, so let me see. So we have to have args or something, so it's a part of the environment. Uh, yes, std environment uh, args. Mm, so when we get a bunch of arcs so let me actually iterate through the arguments and see fn main main for arg in args and i want to just print them mm. Mm -hmm. so if i do that um Okay, so here's the argument of the first one, uh, and if I add more, okay, so here are all of them. As far as I know, args is an iterator, right? So that means I should be able to do something like let mutable args, um, right? So to not clutter the scope, I might as well do something like this, right? Uh, and uh, now I can do something like args next, right? And it will return me something, right? So I suppose um, it should return the first program name. Um, it should return the program name and we can ignore that program name from now on. Uh, iterator next. Uh, come on. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, all right, so this is what we're going to do in here. Uh, so it's going to be next. Uh, and here we want, we want to store the uh, the path to the file, right? So file path and it's going to be args uh, next expect uh, expect it. Um, um, file path, right? So something like this. Uh, and let's actually try to run this entire thing. Right. And I really don't like the error message, like the panics of um, the panics of Rust, because they are really unreadable. Like uh, my eyes go jump to here. And what I see, the first thing I see is not the error that I'm interested in, but word thread main panicked, the thing that I'm least interested in. And only then I see expected file path. You actually have to force myself to find the place where is the relevant message. It would be kind of cool if the message was like the first thing that appears in here. That would be kind of awesome. But I mean, I guess Rust, Rust just have to be annoying like that. Right, you could put message first and only then give the information about the current thread or some, some other stuff on whatever. Like the message is the most important thing in here, in my opinion. Like. Like, why would I care about anything else? Like, like I want to see the message and only then the, the rest of the information. Yeah, I mm. Yes, I am weird like that. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so one of the things we can do in here is um, uh, probably something like this. Um, yeah, you need several levels of debug messages, shit ton of uh, trades, uh, like a very complicated architecture, huge hierarchy tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've already been there. Yeah. So uh, file path. Uh, so this is going to be this. And uh, if actually we can try to do something like this in here. Uh, if let everything has to be overcomplicated, of course. How could I forget about that? <clears throat> um, so let's actually maybe um, match uh, some file path, which we can just return like this. Otherwise, right? Otherwise, uh, I want to print like an error. E print ln uh, error. File path is not provided. Right. So e print ln usage to do or s uh, file path. That's it, actually. So and can we just exit? So I think you can do something with process exit if I remember correctly. Uh -huh. So I think I should be also able to do it like that. Simplicity was never an option. You need to have several layer levels of logging. <laughs> you just can't print useful things on the screen. You just can't. Like, it's an impossible task to determine, as a developer of the application, what user might be interested in. It's just, like, impossible. You have to have overcomplicated system with several layers of logging, with several, uh, like, um, you know, different architectures based on microservices. Yes, 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 yes. It has to be like that. Simplicity was never an option. I got it. Uh, all right. Yeah, but simplicity is like a third-party thing. I don't know. All right. Uh, mm. Simplicity is three hundred bucks. I mean, people, you don't understand the context. The context is goddamn fucking simple. You look, look, look. User didn't provide the file. I just want to say, user, you didn't provide the file. How hard this should be? User didn't provide the file. I just want to tell the user right away, user, you didn't provide the file. Okay. Um... For how much it's easy to without 3k lines. <laughs> mm. uh, Alright. There we go! Look, look how readable and simple this is! It's beautiful, isn't it? It's so fucking good! Like, holy shit! Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's provide this thing. So, I provide that, and nothing is actually read yet, so... Uh, okay. So, one of the things I want to do in here is probably move the to-dos uh, in here, because I'll need to load them first. So it's going to be to do. Um, to be fair, I might as well actually move the entire sort of state there. All right. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is a good music. I really like it. Mm. So we need to open the file. Mm, let file, file, open, and... Uh, so this is gonna be 
file path. Well, this one, I just, I'm just gonna unwrap it, right? So... Okay, um, is there something like read ln? I mean, yeah. I think I should be able to have something like lines. Oh shit. So there's lines, but it's str. Uh, read lines, maybe there's something like read lines. Mm, okay, rest. Read file uh, by lines. Yeah, just an example, just a quick example. Uh, so it already gives you the iterator, I suppose. Wait. Uh, oh, it's a separate... Ah. Okay. Is there something simpler? Uh, do we have to have a buffered thing? Yeah, we have to we have to have buff buffer it. Okay. Self. Oh, you also import module itself. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see. I see. So it's basically, uh, yeah. What they're trying to say it's equivalent to that and uh, that, right? So if you wanna import the I/O itself and the buff read, you can uh, actually import it self. Right, so that's that's cool. Uh, all right, so so buff read studio. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. So buff read was in IO. Okay. Buff read. Okay. Mm. Tired for some reason. So we're gonna do it like that. Lines and four line in here. Uh, we wanna just print that line. So I was gonna print a line. Uh -huh. So line. And then can I just exit this entire stuff? Like process. Exit. Uh, just to see if it worked or not. Uh, okay. So it complains about something being unreachable. Uh, so function or associated not found in din okay that was not enough apparently <sighs> are you is that what you want Buff reader, oh my god. Oh. <sighs> yes. <sighs> All right, so, um, okay, and this one is unwrap. Okay, so, and I want to be able to parse the uh, the item, right? So that's precisely what we want to do in here. Uh, just parse the item. Mm. So when you unwrap this entire thing, um, it needs to survive long enough, right? I can try to do something like parse uh, item, right? Uh, <laughs> Club cotton, all right. Uh, all right, and yeah, this one has to be uh, like a reference to this thing, uh, and then uh, yeah, let me make it debug. All right, so it's gonna be something like this, uh, and if I take a look at this stuff, 
Uh, status cannot perform it. Okay, so uh, we can fix that. So derive uh, debug. Uh huh. All right. So, but we're not parsing it anyway. Right. So, how we're gonna parse the item? Is there any way? Uh, for me to check that a particular thing starts with a particular prefix. Uh, so there should be something like start with. Let me close all of that stuff. Um, Rust docs. Um, mm -mm -mm, starts with. Do we have something like starts with? Um, so string. Okay. Mm, so we can provide a pattern and. All right. So if line uh, if line starts with uh, to do right uh, that means I just return this entire thing without that. Uh, actually, I can just do this. Uh, mm, something about the prefix. Uh, Rust str remove prefix. Uh, trim prefix, okay. Uh, trim start matches. Okay, that's actually pretty cool that there's a specific use case for this. Uh, trim uh, start. Come on, you can do that. Start matches. Uh huh. Must use this returns the trim string as the new slice without modifying the original. Okay, that's precisely what I want, actually, believe it or not. Um, so you have a pattern and... But what does it return? Returns a string slice with all prefixes that match a pattern repeated. What? The hell? Trim start. Uh, returns a, a string slice with the leading white spaces. repeatedly something i okay let me let me try to do that hello scroll hello uh okay uh main rs main rs fn main and uh we're gonna have something like s to do hello right so we have something like this and what i want to print in here is just simply like that s uh trim start matches right and if i do something like this so it also doesn't really particularly like check this thing that well mm. all right so let's give it a try so it's gonna be rust c main rs and then i'm gonna just try to run this thing uh okay so but if it was to do yeah okay but on top of the removing this thing i also need to uh know whether it matched or not so just removing and not removing not enough uh this is definitely not enough so if i know the prefix itself right okay so the prefix is something like this all right uh i can first check that s starts uh with prefix and if it starts with prefix, I might as well actually print a len and just do the slice, right? The slice is going to be essentially uh, prefix len, all right? And uh, yeah, the, the rest is going to be open, all right? Otherwise, um, we can put something like print len uh, no match. So that's the use case I want to have in here. That's precisely the use case. And it doesn't really compile because uh, why? Um, doesn't have a size known at compile time. Uh, okay, can I just take the... All right. So I can put it like that then. Okay. Um, and if I have something like done instead, no match. Okay, so that's perfect. Um, uh, that's perfect thing, more or less. Uh, so let me now do that. Um, main.rs right main.rs uh, parse item um, so i want to have something like to do prefix and the to do prefix is literally this and then we can have done prefix uh, if 
line starts with to do prefix, right? What we're returning in here essentially uh, is some uh, status to do, and then the line to do prefix len like this, but we also have to take a, a reference to this thing. All right, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> then I can copy paste this entire step. All right, so it's gonna be like this. And I can replace to do with done, boom. And otherwise I can just return the number. There we go. So that's basically what I want to do in here. <clears throat> so that's how we're gonna parse all of that. That's how we're gonna parse all of that. Okay, so let's try to compile this entire thing. So it's going to be cargo run. Uh, and I think it, it compiled. No, it didn't. Where are the errors? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It's, it's fine. I'm an idiot. All right. So, uh huh. And let me now go here. So now our application loads the to dos, uh, loads the to dos from the file. So if I run this thing, uh, it didn't load them. Nice. I'm super happy. Oh, this is because we never actually like handled that appropriately. All right. So can I do something like match uh, this thing? Some. Um, so the first one is status. Status to do, uh, and uh, the title. So if it is to do. That means I have to do to do's uh, push uh, title, but I think I have to convert this stuff to string, right? Because I need to own this um, uh, like this. So and then in here I can create place to do with done, boom, uh, done. Uh huh. If we encounter something else, I wanna actually do I wanna do something about that? That would be kind of nice. And you know what I like to do? I also like to report the place where the problem has happened. Um, um, we can put it like this. If you encountered none for whatever reason, uh, what we're gonna do? We also can enumerate, uh, enumerate this stuff. So we can have a index, right? The index of the line. Uh, and in here, we're gonna just print uh, a line. Um, the file, the line, uh, and say ill formed um, item line, right? And then we're gonna just do process uh, exit one, right? And here we're gonna have the file path and the index. And since it will probably start from zero, we need to actually add plus one. Uh, and that's basically how we're gonna do all of that. All right, so uh, let me recompile this entire thing. And I think I need to use build just in case. So what is it complaining about? Uh, value borrowed. File path is already borrowed somehow. It, oh, it was actually moved. Oh, this, that's very interesting. So file consumes this, okay. That's very strange, but okay. Uh, can I clone this? Uh, all right, I think I can. And then I can just uh, remove light because we don't need it anymore. Uh, to be fair, we'll need it at some point because we'll need uh, to save this stuff. All right, uh, now if I try to run it, it seems to be working. As you can see, it loads up the state, right? It loads up the state perfectly. So we can try to uh, modify it directly and just put something like this here, uh, some sort of a test. And then if I run this entire thing, here it is. And then I can, uh, yeah. Um, if I introduce an error in here, like a mistake in here and try to load this entire stuff, it actually tells you where exactly that happened. Uh, but I'm not, not quite sure. Maybe it should not prevent the user from loading this thing, but uh, I don't know. If you run this thing from the Emacs, for, for, some, uh, for, for instance, uh, the thing that can uh, parse these kind of lines, uh, look what's gonna happen, right? So now I will be able to actually jump to the place where this thing happened and sort of fix it, uh, right? And once I fixed it, um, yeah, okay. Mm, so that's actually pretty cool. So as you can see, I can quickly jump to the places that are you know, informed. Uh, now, uh, I think I'm gonna actually put something on this error. Right. Uh -huh. All right, pretty cool. <sighs> so 
yeah we're loading the state on opening the application and we also need to save the state on closing the application right and we already have this uh, save state uh, here it is uh, so what I'm thinking is we need to have separate functions for that right so let's introduce something like uh, save state and it's gonna accept to do which is um, I think it doesn't have to be mutable it's gonna be vector uh, immutable vector of strings and dance uh, which is a immutable vector of strings as well uh, and also the file path right so it's gonna be file path which is a string right so and saving the state is essentially doing this thing right uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, so we're essentially opening the file uh, the file path mm -hmm. the file path then we iterate through the to do's and stuff like that uh, and we're saving all that and as you exit this entire thing it will close the file right so it will just close the file all right, so th that was a mistake. I actually started in cursor's application instead of uh, Emacs. Uh, okay, so another thing we want to have, we want to have a load state, right? So it's going to be uh, similar to this uh, vector. It actually has to be mutable vector, right? So because we need to be able to modify it. Right? Dance vector, well, also mutable, right? String, uh -huh, file path, str. Cool. So, and I'm gonna move that loading uh, logic uh, to here, All right? So I'm gonna pull it like that. Uh huh. Uh huh. So here's the file path. Uh, yeah, that's that's fine. Cool. Uh, so we have separate function for loading and um, saving the state. All right. Load state uh, mutable to do. Uh, mutable dance and uh, the file path, right? So the file path is going to be just a reference. All right, and uh, in here, uh, after you exit the application, so we're going to expect, so it's only going to save the state of the application if you press Q, right? So that's quite important. We probably also want to actually handle sig int, um, right? Because that's another way people exit applications. Uh, save the state on sig int. Right, so that's going to be important. That's going to be very important. Mm, save state to do dance uh, and file path. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, that actually surprisingly worked first try. Almost, uh, but it complained about the... Okay, so we can also unwrap this stuff. Uh -huh. So it's going to be build. Eh. All right. Okay, so now if I run this thing, it seems to be working. Now I'm going to mark some of them as done and I'm going to quit. And if I open it yet again, it's persisted. So yeah, we just persisted the state uh, between the sessions. Uh, yep, that's cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Cool. So, um,. I think I want to actually, let me revert this into a step. Uh, I want to actually commit uh, some of the stuff, uh, like uh, revert it, make a cup of tea. This one is done, uh, write it to do, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I'm going to commit it along with the um, with the application as a, as a test, right? So, uh -huh. mm, so this one is going to be to do. Okay, so and what we did here, we actually implemented the persistence of the to-do state. Uh huh. So persist. There we go. Uh, implement uh, the state persistence. Persistence. Uh, I spell. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, very cool. Uh huh. And to be fair, also I want to do something like close one, so it's gonna automatically close this thing. Alrighty. So 
That's pretty cool. So you can check out the source code of this thing in the, uh, in here if you're interested. And of course, I'm gonna put this entire stuff into the description, right? So uh, source code uh, is gonna be here as well. So uh, that was actually pretty cool. But I'm already streaming like for three hours, and it's kind of too much for me. Uh, and I'm super hungry right now. So I think I'm gonna call it a day, boys and girls. I'm gonna call it a day. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one and I see you all tomorrow. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but we'll see, we'll see. Thanks for all of the subscriptions, for all of the donors and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, love you all. Mwah.